Hello and welcome to part four of my Holbein painting technique investigation series. Um, so, so far what we've done is we've uh, made the gesso board, we've uh, applied the drawing, we've done the imprimatura layer and then on top of that we've uh, painted the highlights in uh, egg tempera paint. So now the stage we're at is uh, we're going to be applying thin layers of uh, oil colour or colour glazes. Now before I start doing that I want to first uh, check uh, my trusty book as to how this uh, thin layer of colour is applied because I'm trying to follow the uh, style of Holbein and uh, this book sets down um, the style uh, or techniques of Jan van Eyck um, and Holbein himself used the same uh, technique as uh, Jan van Eyck with some slight variations that he made himself. So in the book um, it says on uh, how I should apply the uh, thin colour glazes. Uh, so it says, when this heightening with the white has been sufficiently carried out, a resin oil colour glaze thinned with varnish or balsam or sun thickened oil is applied. This must be very lean and very finely distributed. Okay, so when the book mentions a uh, resin oil colour glaze, I, I did some research and um, I think what they mean by a resin oil colour glaze is um, a resin like uh, either mastic or damar uh, combined with linseed oil. Um, I think this can be just pure linseed oil or um, stand linseed oil or sun thickened linseed oil. Um, I don't really know what the, um, the proportion should be or how much um, resin to how much uh, linseed oil there should be. So I think what I'm going to have to do first is just do uh, a few mixtures and uh, do a few experiments and um, see how that goes first before I start applying the glaze on the pitcher. So uh, let's get to that then. So the ingredients I'll be needing are uh, firstly the Damar concentrate, which is a um, it's similar to the Damar uh, ethereal varnish, which I made in episode three, but rather than one part Damar crystals to three parts turpentine, it's one part Damar crystals to one part turpentine, so it's more concentrated than the ethereal varnish. You can also use uh, mastic crystals instead of Damar crystals. Now for the oil, I have uh, bleached linseed oil and uh, bleached poppy oil. So these are the oils I'm going to be mixing with the damar to create the medium. Now to thin the resin oil colour to make it a bit leaner, I'm going to be using regular turpentine, uh, balsam turpentine in this case, and also this damar ethereal varnish which I made in episode three. Now the color I'm gonna be using is some regular alizarin crimson uh, oil color, which is just straight from the tube. So to measure out all the ingredients, I'm just using a little one millimeter measuring cup. And I'm first just gonna get one milliliter of the Damar concentrate. Then for the first mix, I'm just gonna get some of the bleached linseed oil. And then again, measure out one milliliter of that. Uh, add it to the Damar concentrate. And then using my palette knife, I'm just gonna grab a dollop of uh, alizarin crimson, about the size of a pea and just mix it together with the damar and the oil. Now for the next mix, I'm just again going to get uh, one milliliter of the damar concentrate, but instead of the linseed oil, I'm going to add one milliliter of poppy oil. And then again, I'm just going to add another pea-sized dollop of alizarin crimson and just mix it all together. Um. 
So I start off by applying the Damar and uh, linseed oil mixture thinned with turpentine over a uh, tempera paint and I'm just applying it with a brush and then uh, softening it with a slightly softer brush and then on the right hand side I'm doing the Damau and poppy oil mix also thinned with turpentine and on the lower circle I'm just applying the Damar and linseed oil mix this time thinned with the Damar ethereal varnish and uh, on the bottom half it's uh, also the poppy oil and Damar mix thinned with the Damar ethereal varnish. Uh, the book that I was using for instructions also recommends that I use my finger to spread around some of these glazes so here I'm just uh, doing a, a little experiment with my fingers to see how well I can spread the paint with it. So now that I've applied the glaze, uh, the book, which I'm using for instruction, then says, and I quote, If certain forms should still be deficient in plastic expression, temporal white may again be employed to correct this. Now what I think this means is that after applying the glaze, if you've lost some of the detail of the underpainting, um, you need to sort of bring it back out by applying uh, temporal white. So you see here I'm just using pure temporal white uh, and painting directly into the still wet glaze to uh, bring back uh, some of the highlights which have, have been covered. I think the idea behind this is that because you're going to be putting more glazes on top of the original glaze, you kind of want to bring back some of the brightness um, that might have been lost by uh, applying the, uh, the first glaze. So after doing the experiment, I decided to go with a mix of Damar concentrate, uh, linseed oil and uh, turpentine, um, which is what I'm applying here. To be honest, I didn't really see much of a difference between the four mixtures. I think the only real difference was that um, the mixture with the poppy oil uh, just dried a little bit slower than with the linseed oil. Um, you'll also see here as well that um, I've decided to just use my finger to apply the glaze so I'm not using any brushes. I must say as well that I've never really used my finger to uh, apply paint but this technique actually works really well, it, um, surprisingly well because I was able to spread the, uh, the glaze um, around a lot further and a lot thinner than I could with a brush. So as you can see here once I've applied the glaze I'm just going back into the uh, highlighted area with uh, white tempera. Um, so I'm just sort of re-establishing the highlights again. I should also mention as well that the colour that I'm using um, for making this uh, flesh glaze is just um, Madder Lake Deep and uh, I haven't mixed it with any other colours. Uh, this is because the book which I'm using for instruction it mentions that the Van Eyck style of colouring is that you don't physically mix uh, different pigments together to create a colour. So rather you make colours by layering uh, different sort of pure pigments on top of each other.
Okay, so that is the first uh, layer of color glazing along with the uh, tempera highlights uh, now applied. Now before I apply the next oil glaze, uh, I just want to give the entire picture a light scumble in uh, zinc tempera white. Now this will sort of form a kind of semi-protective barrier between the two oil glazes because when you apply an oil glaze on top of a previous oil glaze, the medium in the, the, uh, the new oil glaze tends to reactivate the medium of the old glaze and it starts to sort of strip away the old uh, glaze uh, a little bit. So the tempera layer, which is sort of insoluble in oil, pre protects the, uh, the previous glaze. Okay, so now the tempera scumble is now dry. We're now ready to move on to the next oil glaze. And in the book, it says, and I quote, Another glaze as under five, into which resin oil color may be painted semi-opaquely. The glazes may now be strengthened in the shadows whenever necessary. In this way, intermediate values are created in a very simple manner. So that basically means I apply another glaze just like uh, I did with the previous glaze. But this time, once I've applied the glaze, I then apply uh, a sort of semi-opaque glaze into the already uh, wet glaze. Um, so this basically means I'm applying paint that's been mixed with uh, the glaze medium, but minus the thinning agent, which in this case was turpentine. So here on the face I've applied a glaze of Indian yellow and into the glaze I'm applying semi-opaque uh, mixture of uh, titanium white and uh, Madder Lake Deep in order to create a sort of flesh tone. You can also see here as well that I'm applying uh, darker colours to create shadow. Um, so this is uh, achieved by me mixing a little bit of the Madder Deep Lake with some Burnt Umber, uh, also mixed with some Titanium White. You can also see as well that I'm painting more in a kind of um, a la prima style, where I'm sort of uh, putting down sort of little areas of different uh, colour and then sort of starting to sort of blend it together to sort of create a smooth transition between the highlights and the lowlights. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
and once the uh, glaze that I just did has dried, I then just apply another um, semi-opaque glaze um, over the previous layer, but in this case I'm not actually applying a sort of thin glaze with my finger, I'm actually just directly painting on top with my brush. Now for the flesh, I'm actually just applying another very thin uh, glaze of Madder Lake Deep into which I'm painting another sort of semi-opaque layer of titanium white and a little bit of uh, Indian Nero mixed with uh, Madder Lake Deep just to create sort of a balanced flesh tone. hair I'm just trying to darken everything and get a, a general tone right I'm, I'm not worried about doing the uh, sort of individual strands of hair just yet I think that will come later uh, the same goes for the uh, fur hat that she's wearing on top uh, I'm just trying to get the, the basic tones and colors right I'm adding a few shadows and a few highlights but not 
worrying too much about the sort of individual hairs of the fur. So here I'm just applying one final black glaze uh, to the uh, sort of black cloak she's wearing. Um, I originally started applying the glaze, but then I noticed that the glaze was actually starting to strip the paint of the previous glaze um, off the board. I realized I hadn't applied a sort of thin layer of uh, white tempera in between the glazes. So you see, that's what I did there. So I thought it worth mentioning as I come to the end of uh, painting this sort of oil glazing technique that um, some of uh, the areas of the painting required more sort of uh, glazing and opaque painting uh, than others. Um, some required maybe just two glazes while others had uh, three or four. I think basically the technique is you just have to keep painting uh, glazes on top of glazes until you're kind of happy uh, with the result or that it looks like what it is you're trying to paint. Uh, what I'd also say as well is uh, when painting in this style um, of glazes is don't paint the uh, paint too thick or so thick that you can't see the previous um, layer underneath. This is because um, all of these layers uh, they need to work together to form various uh, different color effects and different gradations of tone and so, so forth and um, this can only be achieved if all the layers are sort of semi-translucent um, so if you're painting a very thick uh, paint on top of these layers um, the, eff the effect of the previous layers is sort of completely negated and it's just a waste of uh, effort really okay so that's all the oil painting done um, when I first started painting uh, with the oil paint, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, but I, I followed the instructions in, laid down in the book as best I could. And I think once I started painting sort of semi-opaque paint into the glaze, um, I, I think I sort of started getting the hang of it. And, um, and I think I sort of achieved the, uh, the results I wanted to do. Um, I'll also mention as well that um, using your finger to paint the, uh, the glazes onto the board, it, it worked really well. Um, I kind of, I, I never knew how good the finger was at spreading paint around. Um, you can make the paint go a lot further with your finger if you just spread it all around uh, thoroughly enough. So um, now that I've done uh, the sort of oil painting, I'm gonna let that all dry. And then I'm going to do the final sort of details, um, the, the very small details such as like uh, the eyebrows and the eyes and things like that. But I'm going to be doing it in tempera paint. And there's a special way um, of applying this tempera paint, which we're going to look into, into in the next episode. So uh, I'll hopefully see you then and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.